Hi, this is me when I was a teeny tiny baby. Well, I'm in there somewhere. Me and all my brothers and sisters have a lot of life ahead of us, and I can't wait to show you. I am a coho salmon, and this is my story. ready to get out of this egg and stretch my fins. The life of a salmon is extraordinary. Over their lifetime, they will travel all the way from their river home out to the ocean and back again to that same river to spawn. Our story begins in freshwater in a river. Salmon will start their life in a salmon nest, which is called a red surrounded by 2,000 of their brothers and sisters. From all of these eggs, only 400 will hatch. These freshly hatched salmon are called Aelvin, and they will spend the first few weeks of their life hanging out in the red, keeping safe, and eating up all the nutrients from the yolk sac attached to their body. I've been cooped up in this red forever. It's only been a few months. I think I'm finally ready to leave the red. <gasps> Aelvin take a big gulp of air to fill up their swim bladders, which helps them stay buoyant in the water. As Aelvin leave the red, they become fry. Life as a fry is dangerous, and as they venture further from the red, fry will face many different predators, including birds. Is that a, is that a bird? Oh no, 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 it's got me. Ah, let me go, let me go, let me go. Oh, phew, oh, oh phew, oh, 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 I got away, I got away. Oh, phew, I'm gonna have to find some better places to hide. Attacks like these are not uncommon. So fry rely on side channels, slow moving water, and pools created by logs to keep safe from predators such as birds. Over the next 18 months, the fry will try their best to survive, but only 15 of the 400 will make it. Environmental factors such as temperature and feeding opportunities cause fry to start their long migration downstream towards the ocean. Before I leave, I want to remember the smell of my home creek so I can find my way back. This is called imprinting. As they journey down, fry go through a process called smultification. They develop silvery scales that will help them camouflage in the ocean. They become more streamlined and more buoyant, and their gills adapt to be able to breathe in the ocean. By changing their bodies, salmon can live in rivers and oceans. Fish that can do this are called anadromous. Okay, down river we go! At the mouth of a river is an estuary. These areas are vital for the survival of smolts. Here, the water is calm, there is lots of cover, food is more readily available, and they will grow until they become bigger and need even more food, which only the ocean can provide. Oof, I'm getting pretty hungry. I think I'm gonna head towards the ocean. The next 18 months of the fish's life will be spent in the ocean, growing and maturing. Oh, I'm so excited to get into the open ocean and explore. Wow, oh, it's so pretty. But the vastness of the ocean doesn't mean it's free of threats. In fact, the fish are about to meet one of their biggest. Humans have impacted salmon at every stage of their life cycle. Deforestation and logging, pollution, fishing and overfishing, salmon's lives have been changed by the way humans use the natural world, and we now need to protect them so they can continue to play their role in Pacific ecosystems. As the rains come, river mouths open up to the ocean, creating a path with enough water for the adult fish to swim from the ocean back upriver to the exact same place they were born and lay their own eggs. 
Well, looks like I've got a long journey ahead of me. Scientists suspect that fish rely on scent to find the stream they imprinted on when they were fry. Hmm, must be this way. As the fish move upriver, their bodies prepare to spawn. Males may develop a hooked nose, known as a kite. These will help them fight for dominance. But because the fish are now so large and brightly colored, they become much more noticeable to creatures on the shore. Whoa, what was that? Was that a bear? Oh my god, it's a bear! Ah, ah, oh my god, is he gonna get me? Ah, there he is again! Ah, oh, I have to hide! Oh gosh, where am I gonna hide? Ah, oh, ah, 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 okay, oh, I think I've hidden. Oh. If the fish make it past all these dangers, they'll make it to their spawning grounds. <laughs> this smells right. Finally, I've arrived at my spawning ground. I have to be pretty picky where I lay my eggs. I want the gravel to be the right size to cover and protect my eggs, but not crush them. And have enough water moving over them so they get oxygen. Hmm, where to dig? Where to dig? Hmm, this is too big. Hmm, that's too small. Oh, found it. This is it. Now to get digging. The female will use all her strength to move heavy gravel with her tail to build her red. Once the red is dug out by the female, she will lay her eggs and males will fight over who gets to be the father of the new baby fish. Once the eggs are laid, the female will cover them with more gravel to protect them. Fish use up all of their energy to make it back to their natal stream and lay their eggs so the next generation of salmon can fill our rivers. Once they are done spawning, they will die and return to the earth as nutrients or food for hungry animals. By the end of their journey, only three of the original 2,000 fish will have survived. What a life I've lived. I've traveled all the way to the ocean and back. I saw so much and lost a lot of brothers and sisters along the way. I'm happy my eggs are safe and will grow up to be a big fish like me. And now, I think I'm going to shut my eyes and rest. Finally.